Each autumn, we gather to mingle our waters and mark the start of our liturgical year. At each of our three campuses, we gather to share our dreams, to declare our values, to be present to each other, and to all that is. Today, across the country, in congregations like this one, Unitarian Universalists are gathering for the same ritual and for the same purpose. In services such as this, water is often described as the giver of life and the bearer of memory. Our mingled waters are said to represent us, this community, and all of the communion we aspire to together. Sometimes the water takes on a richness of meaning, reminding us of the drought of struggle, the inevitability of change, the tumult of life, and the hidden wells of reserve and awe and wonder and hope within each of us. Rarely, though, do services such as this recognize the sheer destructive power of water. Water is the life giver, yes. One atom of hydrogen, two atoms of oxygen, that's what makes life possible. But water is also the life taker, the destroyer, the thing that can fill our lungs and block out the oxygen we need to respire. And I've been thinking about water, the life stealer, since I learned I was coming to Houston to serve as your senior, interim senior minister. One friend told me to get an escape kit for my car, a hammer to break glass, and a cutter to slice the seatbelt. Another advised me not to get a first story apartment. This advice came as from afar I read about the destruction of Harvey, the more than 80 dead, the lives broken, the houses ruined, the streets washed away, the businesses destroyed. And then I arrived in Houston, and I met one of you who lost their home in the hurricane. I met another of you whose car was destroyed. And I met another of you who cannot return to their old neighborhood. And I learned of the city's loss and sorrow, and so I began to think about water as the stealer of life, water the despoiler. And I realized that we could not have a water ceremony that did not acknowledge the catastrophic power of water for water has brought great catastrophe to this city. And one of the tasks of our religious community is to aid us in the face of these catastrophes of our lives. These can be individual, cancer, death, the end of a marriage, the loss of a job, or they can be collective, war, political corruption, systemic violence, the enduring legacy of white supremacy, floods and hurricanes. Some of the most ancient myths that are have attempted to help people find meaning in waterborne catastrophes. 4,000 years ago, the Epic of Gilgamesh was composed in a place we now call Mesopotamia and it tells of a great deluge that destroyed a primordial city. For a day, the gale winds flattened the country. Quickly they blew, and then came the deluge. Like a battle, the cataclysm passed over the people. One man could not discern another, nor could people be recognized amid the destruction. Genesis, the biblical text, recounts all the fountains of the great deep burst apart, and the floodgates of the sky broke open. These myths, and there are many more of them, share a pattern. The deluge comes after the divine grows frustrated with human wickedness. The gods send their lethal waters to wash away sin and impurity. Cities are drowned, 
and then the waters recede, only a handful of the righteous survive. The land returns after all has been turned to ocean. The world is purified. Humanity finds itself given a divine blessing, a divine healing. Noah is told, be fertile, increase, and fill the earth. This is not our theology. Our Unitarian Universalist theology is not one of divine destruction and divine healing. We do not believe that God punishes us because we are impure or wicked, nor do we trust that God, unaided, can bring ultimate justice to the world. Ours is a tradition of human agency and responsibility. Ours is a tradition that acknowledges that it is we humans who have created who have the power to create heaven or hell upon this green earth. Ours is a tradition that recognizes that so much that is wrong with this world, including the crisis of climate change, has been wrought by human hands. And ours is a tradition that understands that the good that exists in this world comes from love. It is a love which Susan Frederick Gray, the president of our association, describes as powerful, unconditional, overflowing goodwill for all people. It is this love which is the historic theological bedrock of Unitarian Universalist congregations. It is the love that our Universalist ancestors used to describe as the sublime heavenly doctrine of universal grace, the idea that God so loved the world that all of creation would be eventually blessed with holiness and happiness. It is the legacy of our universalist ancestors who believed that the unconditional love of the divine, in the words of Rebecca Parker, directs us towards actions of love and care for each other. It is this love that teaches us that we have the human power and the human ability to heal each other and to heal our world. This world and this city are de in desperate need of healing. Today, more than ever, we are called to be healers. Over the last month, as I have listened to the stories from, your congreg from this congregation, I have learned that you have tr worked to heed this call. Many of you have aided each other during and after the hurricane. Many of you have worked to rebuild the city, volunteering your time to recraft homes and assist the injured. Many of you are devoted to the ongoing work, even as we all struggle to survive in a city that has been devastated. Now, I will admit that I am new to your city and to this congregation, and I only know a fraction of what the destruction of the waters brought. And I only know a fraction of the work you have done and the work that has been done here in Houston and I'm eager to learn your stories. And I trust that as I learn them, I will discover in them, as I've discovered in every community I have served, the radical healing power of love. For it is radical love, powerful, unconditional, overflowing goodwill for all people that teaches us that we can heal each other and our world. And it is radical love that I see now as I look at our mingled water. Water might be destructive, but in our service, it can also be a symbol of our collective love for humanity and our planetary home. It can be a symbol for our ability to heal. And so in that spirit, as I close, I rem am reminded of these words by Wayne Arneson. May we find within them the love that is present in our mingled water. Take courage, friends. The way is often hard, the path is never clear, and the stakes are very high. Take courage, for deep down there is another truth. You are not alone. Amen and blessed be.